Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Southern Dirt. My name is Summer and today I'll be going over all the seeds and the transplants that you can plant in your garden right now in zone nine in December. I'm really excited because today is the last video to wrap up our entire season of what to plant and when for zone nine. So if you're just now joining us, you can actually go back and there's an entire playlist on what you can plant for our area month to month so you can have something growing all throughout the year. I also explain and show you how my garden is doing throughout the year and what I personally am planting at that time. So today we'll do the same and I hope you guys stick around and I hope that you learned something from this video. So here's the entryway to the garden. We recently decorated for Christmas. We've got some icicles and lights around the garden. I've rewrapped the tree over there by the fairy garden. If you're just now joining me, I have about 1,100 square feet of garden in our backyard. We have a back barn garden. Um, I'm ready to start a chicken garden at our chicken coop. And we have a food forest and vineyard in our front. But here are my two Vago garden beds. I'm really enjoying these. If you guys see anything in this video that you like and are interested in ordering, you can check out all my favorite products in the description below. I have linked those to my website. So if you're looking where to get the Vago beds or the green stock garden or any of the fertilizer I use and different things, you can take a look at that. So over here we have romaine, butter crunch, bok choy, dwarf curly kale, dinosaur kale, and collard greens. This is my green bed. Um, for a while there, I didn't really have a whole lot of sun on this bed because we had this tree that was just full and this um, arch here. And we recently trimmed those back. As you can see, I'm getting a little more sun, but um, all of this is kind of shade tolerant anyways. They just won't get as big as most of the items that I have in the sun. Um, but they've been doing just fine. We've been eating a lot of um, salad off of this particular garden. I do have some of my bok choy that's going to seed and bolting because we did just have a couple weeks of hot weather and I was worried that all of my lettuce would start bolting also. So I started picking a lot and putting it in the fridge so um, I would have lettuce that wouldn't go bitter. Um, I don't really have a problem with the bok choy when it goes to seed getting real bitter, but still if you can catch it before it does start going to seed like this one you uh, definitely want to go ahead and start harvesting it. It's always good to try a leaf before you throw it in a huge bag mixed with other leaves that are not going uh, to seed. Over here I have some basil. For the longest time I could not keep basil alive and um, we like to travel to the Florida Keys during the summer and there was a lady down there that had basil growing out of her camper like crazy. <laughs> and I asked her, I'm like, what is your trick to growing basil? Mine always dies. I'm always buy spending so much money. And she said she waters the heck out of it. So <laughs> my basil has its own little um, mister here. And since I have been just watering the mess out of them, I have basil for days. These are actually cuttings from my original basil plant over there by the door. And I'm so excited because we do eat a lot of basil and um, that's the ticket to, <laughs> to growing basil. I've got some mint over here. I've got my um, shooting star eggplant that I transplanted from in the ground over here. I have some peas that are definitely doing much better than they were. In the last video, these are purple potted peas. I've had to encourage them to climb this and add some string. So um, if you're having trouble vining your peas or anything, it's always helpful to just kind of encourage them and kind of flip them in and out. Like this one's kind of getting away from me and eventually they will find their way up. Over in this garden bed, I've got some onions, some carrots, I've got this beautiful bok choy. Oh, it's going to seed. Some butter crunch, celery. I recently pulled out my squash here that wasn't doing too well um, and replaced it with 
purple cabbage. This is probably the only thing in the garden other than the plants in my green stock garden that I actually bought and did not start from seed. I always love how purple cabbage looks in the garden. It's so pretty with a pop of color. I recently put some cauliflower in here. I have some Siberian kale. This is the first year I've grown Siberian kale and I really like it. It's easy to throw um, and saute it really fast and cook it down for an omelet or throw it into a salad. It doesn't require a lot of time cooking. So that has been a hit this year. I have some tomatoes here. And over here I've got my green stock garden that's doing really well. I've really enjoyed these tower gardens. I'm growing all kinds of things from flowers to vegetables to herbs all in this small space. I've got some flowers coming out of my tomatoes. I actually purchased two more of these green stalks and I wanted to show you guys the color that I ordered. I ordered the stone. I'm actually gonna be putting these over here. I'm gonna have two towers staged. I just gotta get out here and flatten the ground and get my husband to come out here and help me with that. But I love them so much. I'm gonna plant one with strawberries and one with maybe some peppers and lettuce. So it's really great because I'm not bending over as much and they just look so pretty in the garden. Um, there is an ongoing promotion if you use my promo code SD10, you can save $10 off your order. You can also save 5% off your order ordering these Vago garden beds if you use my referral link in the description below. Over here, I, I still have some pumpkins left over. I just don't want to get them, uh, I just don't want to throw them away yet because I want to save the seeds to see if we can't maybe grow the, this variety um, and also maybe use the flesh for some recipes. Here's my little succulent area. Recently I have propagated a lot of these and have been putting little gift vases together for some of my daughter's teachers and some friends. Over here I have some Puerto Rican oregano. These herbs are close to the door because whenever I'm cooking it's just real easy for me to come out and grab some fresh herbs. The kids are actually have been having a lot of fun recently too with making their own um, marinades. They have watched me come out and make my own special marinades with olive oil and vinegars. And um, so they've started to do that as well and have a lot of fun with that. I also have some um, Cuban oregano, uh, chives, I have onion and regular, rosemary. And I also have some other just basic oregano hanging out the side there. I hope it uh, stays calm enough <laughs> to get through this video today. I wish I had more time earlier in the month to capture the beauty of all these sunflowers. December, I've just been trying to survive with keeping up with all the family um, events, all the ch children's events at school. And I'm sure you guys, if you know, if you have children, the month of December can be crazy and hectic along with of course shopping and all the other things to do. So over here, I haven't had any chance to do any weeding, so you will definitely see plenty of weeds. And um, I'll go ahead and start with over here. This is our dwarf kale, and I wish I would have planted more of this because this has been really nice to make kale chips with. It's just a different texture kale compared to the dinosaur kale that I grow. I definitely plan on uh, planting more of this. We've got some onions all through the middle. We have some eggplants that are just full of flowers. Look at these flowers. These eggplants, oh, I got an eggplant. <laughs> I love that. Oh, my daughter's gonna be so excited. She actually started these in one of my propagation classes. I'm sorry, not propagation class, in one of my um, seed starting classes and it was so fun to see her um, come out there with all the other ladies and gentlemen and get out there and start her own seed tray. And here's some more Siberian kale. Over here I have my grape tomato plants. These are always gifted from my neighbor um, and they're, they're so nice. They're just tiny little grape tomatoes 
they give off so much oh I'm getting a little rain and um, they're actually one of my favorite tomatoes they're so easy to grow we have blueberries that line our entire garden here um, they are I think just finishing up their pr production for their fall um, harvest and then what we'll do is we'll trim them all back so we'll have another harvest they actually produce twice a year so those are always really nice we I'm pretty much if, if the blueberries are not in season I'm buying blueberries from the grocery store every week um, it's one of those things that our family enjoys over here I have a variety called Vates collard green and they have been my favorite collard green um, they just kind of grow more like a cabbage the, the leaf's texture is a little bit thicker than your typical Georgia Georgia Southern they're easier to clean um, compared to your Southern which has more curls in it but it's definitely a little bit different texture I can't tell the difference in taste but I wanted to grow both varieties to kind of see what we liked more and liked better um, I also have onions all throughout and I will not <laughs> plant my collard greens and kale next to each other next year because I usually have room to walk through my rows. I, my rows are three feet apart, but I got a little out of hand when I was planting and um, definitely don't have a whole lot of room to, to walk through in here. Um, we have regular dinosaur kale and we have a, a blue dazzling kale. We, grow the, we grew these last year and absolutely love them. They're just kind of a different color dinosaur kale. Over here we have our carrots. I have, um, I did plant carrots here, but it had a lot of them that didn't germinate. So I just plugged in some of my collard greens here. <clears throat> oh, I do want to show you this carrot because you can start to see, this is how you know when they're ready to harvest. Now this one might still be a little small. I could leave this guy in here for a good while and he'll, uh, the base will get wider and wider. But sometimes our kids can't help but wait till the spring and they'll harvest just tiny ones. That's what we're harvesting right now. But this one looks a little bit bigger. Over here I have a ton of weeds <laughs> and some kohlrabi. Look at that guy. I could harvest him right now, but I'm gonna wait till he gets a little bit bigger. You also can use the leaves like in a dish, like a cabbage or cook them down and make them with some eggs. So I didn't know that you could do that. Um, one of my friends from Costa Rica, she said, oh, in Costa Rica, they live out of, the, basically they live off the trees and the land. And it's so neat when she comes over here and sees some of my food that I'm growing because she'll say, hey, you don't waste that. You can eat that. And so she'll tell me how she cooked it. So. She's a blessing to me to, to, to see things that uh, her family grew up on and what they've done. So she shared a lot of different things with me on those. Over here, oh, my peppers were doing really well. I have not been in the garden much, but I can see I've got some, some bugs that are coming over here. It looks like I got a hornworm that took out this one. Um, I might spray for nematodes again because they always seem to be an issue. But these are my favorite peppers. They are sweet banana peppers. I've got all kinds of flowers going on, tiny little peppers that are starting. Over here I have what's called a yard bean. Basically these long yard beans. And they've been fun to grow. My idea with these were, hey, I'm picking one green bean that would probably make four regular pole beans with less work uh, and time harvesting in the garden. The kids think it's really fun because they uh, can come out here and see who picks the biggest one. It's been giving off a lot of food, um, preferably our family. This isn't our favorite variety to eat. Um, but we can all definitely spice it up with um, different, oh look, looks like my kids. <laughs> you 
Yep. That's one of my girls coming out here and just eating from the garden. But that actually makes my heart happy <laughs> to just see them come out here and eat raw vegetables. Um, but this one isn't our, our favorite. Um, we do like the pole bean, which I have over here. They're just a little bit more tender and tastier than the yard bean. I'll show you right here. Look at the flowers. Though I did have a friend recently tell me if I boil the yard beans and cook them down and then season them, they do taste a little bit better. So I have tried that and that does work. If you guys have any ways to make these taste better, maybe there's a pole bean, I'm sorry, a yard bean variety that's better, um, let me know. Oh, here's some of our blueberries, some late bloomers over there. I hope you guys can hear me with this wind. Look how pretty that is. There is our girl's fairy garden up there. Um, strawberry plants hanging here are some little containers I got at the Dollar Tree and put some they put some of their lettuce in there I had extra of I do have a shiote squash and a butternut squash there that's gonna I'm just gonna let vine over that way some Queen's wreath that I am propagating if you live local, I do have some of the Queen's Wreath for sale. Um, so message me if that's something you want um, to order. The Queen's Wreath plant is the plant that I have that is vines that vines over my entryway that gives off these beautiful purple flowers. I'll show you a picture here in the end. Um, over here, these are extra plants that I had started. Um, Earlier on the season, I just transplanted and thought I would sell them at our local garden festival. I didn't end up going to the garden festival because it conflicted with a local race that we went camping at. And so I have extra plants to gift or to sell. Probably gonna make some arrangements for Christmas and give them to some of my friends. Over in this garden, it is kind of struggling because this oak tree has grown crazy this year and usually we'll trim it back and we didn't get a chance to do that this year so with the sun and the time of the year it this garden doesn't get a whole lot of sun oh my gosh I just heard a tree fall on the back um, but my tomatoes seem to be doing pretty good um, this side of the garden is getting more sun than the other side um, but look at how beautiful these tomatoes are I've got some that are turning red these are called Moneymaker. They are a new variety that I added in the garden this year. It's actually from one of my subscribers that said they're great for our region. You just kind of I grow these smaller variety of tomatoes and I've been really happy with them. They're doing really good. I haven't had to spray the garden a whole lot these past couple months because it's been cool and I honestly have not had time to and I'm thankful the weather is cooling down. I'm not having to tend too much to the garden. Um, this garden still needs mulch. It's been really hard to get around doing that. Um, we have plenty of wood chips in our front yard to use. After mulching that garden by myself, I decided I am not gonna spend a whole day breaking my back doing that by myself. And I plan to team up with my husband over the holidays to get this done. Over here, we've got some kohlrabi that's doing really well. Y'all, I'm embarrassed about my cucumbers. I've never been able to grow these. I do have one cucumber on it though, right here. <laughs> it's not even pretty, but I have one. Um, I need to learn a little bit more about how to grow squash and cucumbers. Um, I always have a trouble with growing those. Oh, I do have a little baby one right here. So if you have any basic tips for me, those are the two hardest plants that I have a uh, gro hard time growing. Looks like I've got some late blooms over here on my blueberry bushes. Over here, we recently planted some beets. A lot of them got dug up by squirrels. You probably can't see them because the weeds are so bad. 
the girls promised that they would uh, come out here and help me do some weeding over the holidays. I have some broccoli growing here, some cabbage. I just recently planted some um, radishes here and we've got a random Seminole pumpkin that is growing down our fence. And I do have seeds for sale if you guys are interested in growing some little pumpkins. I've got some random bok choy, some sunflowers, and honestly, this garden is just looking really sad. Over here, I have some sweet potatoes that are popping up because I guess I missed some sweet potatoes from the last time I planted um, and harvested them. But I'm just letting them be and kind of see what they do. Um, our rose bushes are looking really good. My daughter planted some pole beans over here, which we need to get to picking. And this is my one and only survivor from, I'm sorry, it's not the one and only, it's the one and only collard green survivor from last year. I've just been kind of letting it grow like a tree. And I need to kind of come back over here and get him pinned up. But look at how beautiful this is. He was planted last year, and I believe September, and he is still producing. So I was really excited about that. I'm just gonna let and hope that this continues to grow and see how long we can keep him alive. Um, the only other plants that survived last season was our eggplants, which I have in pots. And that pretty much wraps up this garden. I do have a pumpkin patch in the front. I'm gonna show you all the pumpkins that we have harvested in a moment. So here's our pantry. We actually finally got to building this little setup so I can put my pumpkins and loofahs and seeds, some of my um, items that I'm canning from the garden and just all this back stock that we have put in, in, been putting in here, but um, since my husband is a home builder, this was, we knew that this pantry would be very intricate. We wanted to custom make everything in here and use antique pieces. And we knew that we didn't want to pay anybody to come in here and do that, um, that we personally wanted to do that. So we finally found some really cool Caladium bulb um, racks. We use them as shelves. So, we are still actually working on finishing out our entire pantry slash storm room and wine room. And I will give you guys an update on that down the road. These are seminal pumpkins and look at how beautiful these things are. So these pumpkins will last up to a year in my pantry. I actually just used the last pumpkin that I harvested last year and we've had them <laughs> for over a year. So. Um, this is a great survival food. I highly recommend it. I do have seeds for sale if you guys are interested. I just canned some green beans from the garden. I was really excited about that. So now I'm gonna go over the list of all the things that you can plant right now in zone 9A and zone 9B. I will put an entire list in the description below. I'm actually thinking about maybe putting together an entire book that you can print out and it will show you everything that you can plant month to month to make it easier moving forward. Something as a guide. I don't know if that's something you guys think would be helpful. Let me know and I might have some time to work on that. So for zone 9A, you can plant arugula, beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, celery, carrots, Chinese cabbage, basically bok choy, um, collards, kohlrabi, kale, mustard greens, endive, onions, radish, spinach, Swiss chard, and turnips. For zone 9B, where I'm located, we can plant arugula, beets, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, celery, Chinese cabbage, collard greens, endive, kale, kohlrabi, lettuce, mustards, onions, 
snow peas, potatoes, radish, spinach, Swiss chard, and turnips. Now I'm gonna show you all the seeds and seed packets that I'm planting right now in this next clip. So I wanted to show you guys what I plan on starting this month. I've actually already started potatoes um, in our back barn garden along with some sweet potatoes. Even though it's not time to start sweet potatoes, I wanted to see how well they did in the winter. So over here, we have a lettuce mix. It's a little seed disc. I tried this last year. It didn't really work out as well as I would have liked, but I'm gonna give it a try. Um, I think I started it <coughs> early. I'm gonna start this one in December. Maybe it will uh, germinate better. I also have never been a big fan of mustard greens, but I think I wanna just try and grow them and give them another chance. So we're gonna try some mustards. Um, really enjoy French dressing radishes. So we're gonna plant some of those. I'm gonna do another planting of butter crunch. I'm gonna do some salad bowl lettuce. I've not been able to grow Brussels sprouts real large, but I don't think I've started them from seed, so I'm gonna to try to start them from seed and see how well they do. Also do some more lettuces, um, definitely some more bok choy because that's going to seed. Um, I also will start some uh, more kale because I'd like to have more of that in the garden. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do spinach <clears throat> because our kale, we've been using that as spinach in different dishes, um, but I might just do a few of those just to show you how those grow um, and start some mammoth sunflowers because most of mine are going, uh, most of mine are pretty much dying at this point. So if you are interested in any seeds or any products, I have a website where all those are listed so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wanted to take the time to thank you guys for being loyal subscribers and purchasing items on my website and purchasing the products that I love and use through my affiliate links. It definitely helps my channel grow and it helps me continue to grow this into a business so I can focus on something that I absolutely love and have a passion for. So I also wanted to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a safe New Year. I hope you guys have plenty of time to get in the garden and spend some great time with the family. And if you haven't started one, now is the perfect time to start with this cooler weather that we have coming in. And I will see you guys next year.